Yeah, welcome back. Uh, President Mohamed Buhari allayed concerns uh, over the Central Bank of Nigeria cash swap and the Naira redesign project, promising Nigerians that the Apex Bank was doing everything necessary to ensure that their businesses are not hurt. Despite the unprecedented pressure being put on the president by some state governors, politicians and lawmakers, including the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabia Mila, who threatened to arrest the CBN governor, Godwin Emefile, the president promised Nigerians that the central bank, commercial banks, and other stakeholders were doing everything necessary to ensure that the entire supply chain does not experience disruption arising from the currency swap policy. President Buhari on Sunday in Daura, Katsina State approved a 10-day extension of the deadline for the swapping of the currency to new notes. Now, we're being joined by uh, uh, Muiwa Dixon, who will be talking extensively about this. Good morning and welcome to the program, Muiwa. Good morning. Okay, um, we're just wondering, if, uh, if MFLA has said that there's enough currency to go around, uh, we're hearing this same thing, just like it happened in the fuel, that there's enough fuel, we're still having scarcity. And we're wondering, in the Central Bank of Nigeria, having printed all the money that we will need uh, to swap, why do you think there's still a shortage of these new Naira notes? Uh, I think one thing is very particular about Nigeria from time is uh, the distance between policy making and uh, fulfillment of manifestation of those policies. So most times when we talk about, when we do things in Nigeria, we talk more on, of records. So the CBM, I said, they are printed, so, 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 and, and so there should be that money everywhere. But when we look at where does this money go, does it, is it going to the bank or going to those people that are concerned? Because even as at this morning, I was at the bank with one of my workers and we deposited old notes, but we're not able to even get the new notes from the bank, even the ATMs. We're not dispensing as it should be. So I believe it's between government policies making and um, the execution of those policies. There's always a very big gap when we look at it. What is this, that unique thing that we need to understand about this CBN's cashless policy, by the way? Because uh, some people are not even seeing the cashless policy. They are seeing polit politics inside whatever policy they have brought. Some people are thinking that it is a witch hunt on some politicians that might want to flaunt money at this election time. But the main thing, that the main reason that was given to us was that CBN wants to implement a cashless policy and mop up the whole money that is in the hands of people and not in the banking uh, uh, bank vaults, uh, so to speak. So help us understand some of the things that we need to know about this cashless policy of the CBN. Moyua, are you there? We seem to have lost connection with Muiwa. As soon as he returns, we are going to continue uh, with this topic we're talking about, CBN's cashless policy. But as we wait for the CBN's cashless policy discussion with Muiwa, uh, Bio, you're still there, right? Um, maybe we'll just have a small revisit on uh, uh, what we discussed with uh, uh, Tunji earlier on about the Beavers. And he asked a critical question, which, which I'm also wondering now. Bio, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yes. Uh, this Beavers, uh, okay, let me just give you a, a funny experience. At what point um, I, l I lost about 1,500 a, a Naira on my uh, BRT card, Kauri card. And when I asked them how that could uh, happen, the only explanation they gave to me was that maybe at some point I was tapping the card and BRT was was giving me opportunity to take a ride when there was no money in my card. And <laughs> I, I couldn't wrap my head around it. I didn't understand it. But what I saw was that the people themselves did not even understand it in the first place. Now, a lot of, a lot of questions come to mind when we talk about beavers and the fact that there was overvoting. But let's leave the matter now. I understand that uh, uh, Muiwa is back. Muiwa. 
we were asking yeah. to understand what that unique thing about this CBN cashless policy is that we may not uh, be understanding right now because a lot of people, like I said earlier, are just tying the money, the redesigning of the Naira notes to politics. So help us understand what this cashless policy is. Yeah, the cashless policy of the CBN is quite different from the political view of it. People are just thinking the redesigning of the Naira is towards the general election. But I believe um, it's something that should have been done even before now. One, uh, uh, oftentimes, cashless policy makes transactions easy. What I mean easy is that you don't have the fact of moving cash. And even from the time we've been doing cashless policies for a lot of things, let's look at major transactions. But we have to bring it to the um, market woman level to the in, um, informal sector level. And I think that's what CBN is trying to achieve. Because in the formal sector, a lot of cashless transactions have been going on. But it is high time. The CBN wants us to take it down to the informal sector, which has been left out of the cashless policy for a long time. And this has been happening in a lot of countries. Let's take Kenya, for example. They've been achieving a lot when it comes to the area of cashless policy. So it's something that we need to do. It will be a good thing on the part of the government and even on the part of um, the citizens. So it's something that should go around. So I guess the CBN is trying to focus more on the informal sector to see how they can now bring them on board and the cashless policy affairs. Well, uh, Bio, uh, over to you. Yeah, um, the, the, this point you, you raised um, is very interesting because the central bank governor did mention that over um, a trillion naira has now been brought into the banking system and that there's still 900 billion outside of the system in their own estimation mm. and that the extension to the uh, period within which we needed to exchange your, your own naira notes is actually to try to capture a part of or all of the 900 billion that is still outside of the system but but what what, what is interesting about this statement is that he mentioned that as an aside. He didn't really focus on that. He didn't really dwell on the achievements so far of this policy, okay? Which might, might now make people to continue to think that it is rather targeted at politicians, you know. There's also the question of terrorism financing and those who have been kidnapping people and asking for ransom to be paid. And somebody was actually remarking to me yesterday that within this period, it, di it did appear as if kidnapping had reduced within this period of this exchange of your Naira for, for new notes. Do you think the CBN has articulated its message clearly to Nigerians? Has it been able to explain clearly why this policy is being done? And what does it need to do more within this period that is left? To explain properly to people for if you think it doesn't explain properly and if you think it has i mean it would be nice to have your perspective yeah, i believe um the cbn cashless policy is really working in the especially in the area of uh, insecurity the kidnapping and so has reduced though we still have um, even recently <coughs> over the weekend we still have some cases everywhere and um that will help a lot because if we look at what the CBN is doing in the area of bringing in the old notes, people are scared of taking, people that are getting their money from sources that are not genuine are scared of taking those monies to the bank. So I guess that has reduced a lot of things. Even um, arm robbery and bug, um, other sort of crimes has reduced radically within the last two months. I agree with you quite on that on uh, bio. So the areas I think um, the CBN needs to do is in the area of network. The networking part of it needs to be improved. Like as on Sunday, that was yesterday when everybody was going to bank and people were trying to do different forms of transaction. We noticed that the network was a bit jam packed and we could not have, we just have jamming of uh, network everyone there. Even the bank apps were not working as it should be. So that is where we need to prepare well for the cashless transaction, because we are talking about a bulk of money, you are bringing a lot of people on board. I'll tell you the cashless policy, this um, old note redesigning has made a lot of people 
you even look at some of our women. I believe when the CBN said we still have over 90, uh, 90 billion or so outside are yet to be captured because we saw people bringing in cash, even some old women around, because I deal with some informal sales of people. The way they were bringing their cash to the bank, all they just want to do is please get this money to the bank. And a lot of people, you see people that are on bank. So that's why you will know that in this generation, there's still some people selling and they are making good turnovers, but they are yet to be banked. So it's, those are areas that I think we need to in, improve on the network part of it. So I, uh, that's one. Then other things we need to do is we also look at what are the fears of these people? Why are they not bringing their money to the bank? I think CBN also needs to consider that. Apart from those that are getting their money from uh, engineering sources, but there are some people that are doing legitimate business that also want to uh, bank. But let's look at what is happening all around us now. The inflation has affected a lot of goods. So as those in the uh, buy and selling part, they get less the, than the profit they were getting before. So if you ask these people to bring their money to the bank, what they are complaining more is transaction charges. So, okay, let me give you a scenario. Uh, in a shop where somebody sells a good for 10,000 Naira and it makes a profit of maybe 150 or 200 Naira. And when they make a transfer to that person, the bank deducts 50 Naira for, bank, uh, for stamp duty. Then even some other transaction, even when you are withdrawing the money, you pay charges. At the end of the day, you discover that his 200 naira profit has been reduced to 90 naira, which can no longer fund the business. It goes on and on like that. So if we want everybody to join in this cashless for you, we have to look at these transaction charges. After networking, we have to look at these transaction charges. What does it cost these people? So people, a lot of people do not want to deal with the bank because they believe the bank is just out there to keep deducting their money. So those are the fears we need to uh, we need to also share. So the, the, the issue of the network is a very good point. I mean, all the points you made are very good points. Uh, I'm just wondering whether the um, our network providers the, or the internet service providers, the ISPs, whether they are on board on this, because they are the ones actually who really have to now ensure that there's sufficient bandwidth that can accommodate all these new people that are coming into the network. If you remember during COVID, uh, when we started having meetings online, many of the traditional online platforms for holding meetings were not sufficiently capable at the beginning. I don't want to mention names. They were not sufficiently capable because suddenly we had so many people coming into the onto the network, so many meetings all over the world. But, but then later on, this was corrected. But for the CBN cashless policy, it does not look like the internet service providers and other pr uh, providers of uh, network bandwidth have been carried along. Uh, and I really don't know what can be done within this, this window that is left before it closes. We have, what, maybe two weeks more, right, before it closes. Is that period sufficient to improve the bandwidth, the internet bandwidth, to be able to cope with this huge number of potential bankers, uh, sorry, bank customers that are joining the system? Yeah, the window is, actually, what the bank needs to improve is the bank themselves, they are not prepared for what is coming. The internet itself is ready, they have the bandwidth, especially where they have 4Gs around, it's a work, but, you know, when, if, let's look at the capacity of the system itself, what can the bank hold onto, like, Okay, normally they have about, let's say, 20 million customers. By their own average, they believe, okay, maybe every day we have about 1 million transactions on a half. So they are just prepared for that. So but by the time a lot of people start logging in, trying to get information from that site, it becomes a problem for them to handle. So they also, the bank, the banks also need to be prepared. And when we look at it, if for big transactions, you can look at the bank app. I think that is the area where the banks, and this is more concerned, is an internal system within the bank. They need to work more on it. Then work more, okay, also with the network providers and how they can improve on the USSD. Because it's easier. The people that do smaller transactions, they are, the numbers, they are more than those that do bulk transactions. So for bulk transactions, they can wait. So let's look at how can, okay, let's look at currently now why we have so much uh, tension on the... A new design, um, the new Naira design is because 
even when we look at the current fuel hike that is happening all around the country, you see that the cost of transportation and smaller unit goods have gone up. So, for example, a bus stop that has been, maybe, for example, 100 Naira has now gone to 200, 500. And that means you have to pay with denominations like 200, 500, and 1,000. So there's more tension or there's more um, prayer on the notes that are higher than 100 Naira. So imagine if I have to pay, a, possibly we have bus stops now that are about 1,000, 1,500. So if I have to pay now, then that means I have to use the notes that are equivalent in that regard. It will, be, it will not make sense for me, even for the conductor that you are paying with 50, 50 naira, you want to pay about 1,000, and he has like about 20 uh, passengers to attend to at the same time. That's going to create a problem. So the current increase in uh, foil hike is also part of those things that have contributed to it. So, so we should design a system. Okay, now how can we use USSD to pay bus, uh, for buses? Mm. So when we start thinking like that, then we know we're approaching the cashless service because even transportation is things... If you look at the cash transaction, uh, uh, transaction that goes around tra uh, transportation in a day, it's much. So we have to start thinking in that regard. So everybody concerned, even the CBN needs to look at how can the simplest process of this be brought in into the cashless uh, policy uh, decision that they are making. So let's okay. look at, let's begin work towards how can we make people pay for bus fare using the cashless system. If we start thinking in that way, I think we'll have more idea of what is coming Okay. Uh, all right. Um, uh, Muyiwa, I would like to say thank you to you for coming. Uh, Muyiwa uh, Dixon is the GM Eki Investment Hub. Thank you so much for being a part of our program this morning. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a privilege for being part of the program this morning. Okay. Uh, well, Bio, we, we have a lot of things to discuss after the news, but right now let's just take that news break. And uh, when we return, we look at some of the points that both Muyua and Tunji had made in the course of the show. Stay with us. <laughs>